The first lesson is found in the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm is found in Psalm 104, beginning with verse 1. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes wind his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is found in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. The word of the Lord. Please stand of the gospel. The Gospel reading is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning with verse 15. Glory to you, Lord. 
If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live in you also, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord You may be seated. Welcome to Confirmation Sunday. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Going to come down here. These are four students that we're going to shortly give them a chance to be confirmed. You guys are going to make a promise today. So I'm going to go ahead and have, you're going to get a chance to stand up and say hello to your congregation. And you're thinking, hello, I'm not prepared for anything here. So um, the students that are here, Andrew, Sadie, Toby, and Charlotte, please stand, turn around, face your congregation, wave hello, say hi, good morning. Now, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to do a selfie. Okay. Okay, get in. Get in. Now, those of you back... Those of you back there behind in the congregation, smile and make funny faces. Ah, there we go. Okay, well done. You can grab a seat. Um, that was a little selfie training. A friend of mine, Nate Davis, if you're listening online, that's a selfie training video that can be released online. It will be available on the church website. He has this tendency to do selfies, and he always does them like this. That's not a selfie. That's a nostril. If you do a selfie, you have to get a little, a little bit aerial. Okay. Okay, we're going to make sure to send that selfie shot to all the families, because this is a fun celebration. All the fun aside, this is a wonderful, wonderful occasion to gather with you and your family as you stand in front of your families, your congregation, your pastors, and ultimately your Lord, making a promise. This morning we're going to be talking about what it means to be a promise keeper. Because we serve a God that is a promise keeper. But before we get into all that, I just want to make sure to say uh, hello and thank you to a few people. One, hello to those of you online. LaVon, if you're still watching. Um, Anyone else? I realized I had a bad son moment. I didn't know my mom was going to be watching. (laughs) Hi, Mom. She, She sent me a text after the last service, and she's like, oh, you made my day. And I was like, I didn't say hello. So, hi, Mom. Um, Anybody else online, we're glad that you're joining us online uh, and worshiping with us um, at Good Shepherd. You are always uh, part of this family, and we pray for you regularly. Yesterday, we had an amazing experience. Yesterday was our first food distribution event where we partnered with the Utah Food Bank to provide food for those in need in our community. Those of you that helped out, whether you were praying for the event or whether you were involved, we had about 40 volunteers. A lot of people helped and were present and engaged and serving. Thank you for getting this ministry started in a tremendous way. It was awesome. Uh, I'm not going to let the enemy slip in and make me feel discouraged because we didn't have as many families showing up to receive food as we had originally projected with the food bank. Food Bank is actually, so that you know, they're super, super excited for this partnership. Um, The gentleman, David, who I'm working with at the Utah Food Bank, he's like, this is is an amazing place. I'm super excited. You have amazing volunteers. Uh, It made it so wonderful. Yesterday, we served about 60 families, and there is a little bit left over. So today, in honor of confirmation, we're having a Idaho luau. There's a lot of potatoes and pineapples, of all things. Uh, In all seriousness, if you could use some of the produce that's out there, or if you know somebody who would benefit from it, please take it with you. Uh, We don't here at Good Shepherd have the capacity to store it for very long. 
So we'd like you to put it to good use. Um, have a good old fashioned Idaho luau this afternoon. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend. What says Memorial Day weekend? Better than a potato. I don't know. Yeah, they're really, really good potatoes. Wonderful uh, produce that's out there. In all seriousness, take some. Last week you were challenged to take a water bottle and give it away. This week you're being challenged to take a pineapple and give it away. I bet the choir, going back to the last service, when that Ale, Ale, Alleluia song came up on the screen, how many of you, be honest, were looking for four words? I was. Um, I love how the choir sounds this morning, but I told Barb, I was like, it's, um, there's a reason I don't sing with you. Um, one, it's kind of like in a classroom environment where one person brings the bell curve down. I would bring the bell sound down. Um, but you guys sound phenomenal. But I realized what my problem was. I was listening to the song, Ale, Ale, Alleluia, and I heard four words. And then I decided I should read the screen. So I looked up and was like, this isn't the right song. There's only three words. Pastor Susan and I were, I, I got her. She started looking for four words. Yep. Thank you for your gift this morning. Okay. So as we get started this morning with confirmation with Pentecost Sunday, if you would, please join me in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this place, a place to gather for worship. Lord, more than just this place, I thank you for these people, this congregation, this family that is gathered in your house to honor you, to worship you, to adore you. And Lord, this morning in particular, I thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit that is still active, still moving, still sending us out today. And Lord, we pray that you would be moving in abundance in us today. Send us forth with joy in our heart to represent you well. And may we enter into a life-altering relationship with you, the ultimate promise keeper, and cause us to be people of promise in this world that needs you desperately. Pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Being a promise keeper, that's our challenge, our invitation. That you as confirmation students, momentarily, you are going to come forward, you're going to stand in front of the congregation, and you're going to make a promise. One of the things that I love about the fact that you're here with a white robe and the red stole, guess who you look like? You look just like the pastors. Guess what? He's calling you into ministry. Maybe for some of you, you might be a pastor. Doesn't matter your employment. Doesn't matter your, where you end up. Each and every one of us are called to give Jesus away. To proclaim the good news. To be His ambassador in the world. We're invited into a relationship that... His, God's deep desire is to transform our heart and send us out into this world. Unlike those that this week have been wearing a similar robe, either this week or next week with high school or college graduation, a graduation is a well done on what I have finished. Today, it is not about, yes, we're celebrating what you have put into this process. So well done on what you have finished. But the promise you're about to make in front of this congregation, the promise that we need to make with them in community, in family, is about moving forward. What's ahead of us? What is next? Where God is calling us? Who God is calling us to be? And how we can be people of promise. So it's not... A, just simply a celebration of what you have done, but it's a being a promise keeper and wholeheartedly stand in front of this congregation and make that promise. Um, as we get into scripture, we start to see that being a promise keeper is serious business. It's a big deal. Uh, now, promises that we make, confirmation is an affirmation of baptism. So let's go back to when one gets baptized, whether it be as an infant or uh, which is a family choosing and bringing a child into the Lord's house. Guess what? That family is making a promise to that child. We as a congregation are making a promise to that family. 
Here, you're making an affirmation. You're saying yes to that promise. So let's look at the promise that's made in, in baptism. We promise as family, as individuals, that we're going to bring them to the Father's house or be in the Father's house. We promise that we're going to teach them the Ten Commandments, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed. Not just for the sake of memorizing these things, which is valuable. You guys as confirmands know how important I like to communicate that these things, memorizing them helps it become part of who we are. It's not just for increased data in the gray matter. It's a matter of letting it become part of our DNA so that when we have a conversation with a classmate, a, a teammate, a friend, a family member, and they say, what is it that you believe? Well, I believe in a God that made all things. I believe in a God that sent his son into this world to give us life and life abundant by dying on the cross on our behalf. I believe in a God that is still functioning today and sending power into this world and healing lives. Apostles' Creed just came out without just simply reciting the memorized words. But it becomes part of who we are when those moments are hard and we just don't know what to pray. We have, <laughs> Lord, teach me to pray. So when we memorize these things, they become part of who we are. And it becomes a, a daily exercise to let them come out. So in baptism, we're promising that we're going to, as a community participate in this process of teaching, and we're going to bring them to the Lord's table. What are the promises that one makes in confirmation? What are the promises that the, this group of students are going to stand in front of you? Well, they are going to make this promise. You have made a public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people to hear the Word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace throughout all the earth. If yes, answer yes by the help of God, you'll have that chance momentarily. But do you see how that promise is about making a statement of your faith of what you're going to promise moving forward? God is the ultimate promise keeper. Scripture is full of His promises. They're abundant. They're everywhere. Promises about His goodness. Promises about Him being with us. Promises about His provision. Promises about answering prayer. I, for one, this is where I pause and get vulnerable. There's one of the things that we can learn, that we can be challenged with, that we, I for one, I need to consider when being a person of promise, is I need to consider not to make it my agenda, not for me to enter into some type of a bartered relationship with God. For 40 some odd years I've been praying for healing for the eye condition that I deal with. For me, I would love to be like, hey, okay God, I see in, in, in Scripture, I see over and over and over again your promise to heal. Hello. What about me? It would be easy for me to come to the place and say, well, God, if, if I, then you. If I do all the right things, if I say all the right things, if I behave in just the right way, won't that make you keep that promise to me? His promises aren't this bartering system. His promises are an invitation into relationship so that I can come to the place where it says, Jeff, the answer could be yes, no, or maybe. Your agenda is to only look for one. But my promise is, His promise to me is that He wants me in relationship with Him. He wants me to be in a place of that relationship that causes trust and deep reliance on Him. And I would say 95% of the time, that's where I'm at, if I'm honest. So throughout Scripture, we see God's promises about answering prayer, promises about salvation. Talk to you about our challenge. My challenge. I remember when I was a kid, I frequently had these, this 
I'm not going to call it a, a childlike faith. I would kind of, kind of call it a childish faith. And that was my barter system. If I do this, God, you'll do this. If I'm nice to that person I don't like, then will I get the new bike? God wants something far more from me than a bartering relationship. Today our scriptures help, and this is where I want to take us, if, if your desire too is to be in the place where God wants us to be, this is what the journey I want to take us through in the passages that, that we read. Because they are meaningful and powerful to me and I want to share that with you. For me it's something I always share with the confirmants. But I want to invite all of us to hear it. We hear in Psalm 104 this amazing, awe-inspiring psalm. If you go back and reread Psalm 104, 1 through 9, and you, the whole psalm, really, and it paints this majestic picture of the enormity of the power of the majesty of God. The mountains are his footstool, and just I mean it's just awe-inspiring, and you're left going, wow. I'm left feeling kind of small, but I'm left going, God is a big God. But I also hear his promise. There in verse 9 says, he drew boundaries to the water and is a clear reminder of his promise to not let the waters flood the earth again because we act in disobedience. We hear God's promise and he is a promise keeper. But for me, I begin in the place where I need to realize, wow, I need to have that wow moment. I need to have the enormity of God. For me, I had that wow moment yesterday even. The enemy would have loved for me to get discouraged and say, oh, you didn't get in all the families that you were hoping for. Too bad for you. And I was like, no. My ah, wow moment was when the semi-truck pulled, pulled in and unloaded pallet after pallet after pallet after pallet. Piles of food. And then all these volunteers showed up to give it all away. Three simple stories. One, a woman coming in, teary-eyed, and she just said, thank you. I'm living in my car, and without this gift, I don't know where my next meal would come from. A 50-some-odd-year-old man, mid-50s, comes in and he's like, my rent is so high. I never thought that I'd be in my 50s and I wouldn't have a mortgage. I'd still be renting. But it's so high, I can't do anything about it. And it's continuing to climb. And without this gift of your time and your, your giving, I don't know where my next meal would come from. Or the man who at the end of the day walked in, didn't have a car, just walked in and was in need of something. And he was sent. We wanted to send him with a pineapple. Um, but he took a bunch of oranges and he just stopped and he said, this makes a huge difference. Thank you. I had that wow moment yesterday. That wow moment caused me to not listen to the discouragement that the enemy would love to whisper in. So in Psalm 104, we hear this wow moment. And then we get into the book of Acts. And Acts chapter 2 begins with continuing that wow moment through that day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit showed up. And ever, I mean, it's all these languages being spoken, and they, what was it that was being proclaimed? What was it that people were hearing? They were hearing the wonders of God. They were hearing the story of God's majesty and wow. And there, I have to imagine, it was kind of this moment where those that were gathered were left going, wow. But then they asked a really, really good question What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, it means that God wants to speak to our hearts. God wants us to hear Him. God wants us to understand Him. God doesn't want to just remain this like distant, high-off, majestic God that we just are left in feeling tiny with. But He wants us to hear His voice intimately and hear Him in our hearts and be drawn into relationship with ourselves. And then the rest of Acts chapter 2, Peter delivers this powerful message of the movement of God. And then guess what starts to happen? Acts chapter 2, beginning in 42, they gave themselves to the apostles' teaching. What does this mean? 
they started to understand what it was to be people of promise. They gave themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, to fellowship, and to prayer. They gave themselves to gathering together in community to worship, to rely and trust on God. First Timothy, a young man being called and commissioned to watch over the church, and Paul challenges him and says, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but rather set an example for all the believers in life, in, in faith, in speech, and in purity. Those two passages for me are a word for each of you, but for each of us. That we're called in that awe moment to realize how important it is to be in God's house, to gather at His table, to be people of prayer, to be in relationship with Him. And then they ask... Sorry, they didn't ask but we see the outcome. We see the outcome at the end of Acts. What happens? Acts chapter 2 is these, they've given themselves to these things. They've made this promise. They've entered into a relationship with the, the wow God that keeps His promise to us. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We live in a world people need, yes, food. But what people need is Jesus. If us giving food allows them to be in a place where they can have that awe moment and their heart can open up and hear Jesus and invite through the work of the Holy Spirit Him to move in their lives, awesome! The Lord added to their numbers Daily, those who are being saved. And in 1 Timothy, after they, Timothy is challenged, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in all these things. You will not only save yourself, but your hearers. In other words, you're called to go from this place, be the people of promise, and go tell the story. Go tell about Jesus. Go give Him away. Do it in life. Do it in speech. Do it in purity. But give Jesus away. We're all called to be those people of promise that will, just like these students are about to, be people that stand before each other and most importantly stand in front of God and say, here I am. Send me. Pentecost is an amazing and wonderful thing. God has not left us abandoned. He did not leave us alone. It says in, we're not left as, as orphans. But He's called us to be in the love relationship with Him, to hear His commandments, and to be obedient to Him and represent Him well in this world. So, with that, um, I would like to present our confirmands.